do a lot of things there, mainly by enforcing a security policy. And when I was talking about, uh, you know, this extension address chain, just a few things about how an ACL work, whether it's in a router, in a firewall, or a P6 table, or whatever. So the package looks something like this. You have the IPv6 header, and you see in green the TCP. This is where you want usually to say permit 22 and block, I don't know, 21. In the middle, there are multiple extension headers, three here. So it means that now your ACL, or your IP6 table entries, needs to be able to pass the chain, okay? After the IPv6 header, oh, that's all by up. All by up, this is so many bytes, so I need to go to the next one. Oh, routing, this is so many bytes, so I need to go to this one. Okay, you need to pass this chain. It's doable, okay? Uh, but what happens if, at some point of time, because when do I stop? Okay, when I recognize TCP on UDP, okay? But what if the layer four is a new TCP that I am not aware of? Uh, do I need to continue? Is it the last one? I have no clue. And the other one is that, what happens if, uh, same thing, right? An, a new extension headers, currently there are about five of them, what if the ITF invented the sixth one, and then your old routers are only able to pass the five first one? What is this? What is he doing when he received the sixth extension header, the new one? Right, so a couple of questions mark here. You can apply ACL, again, IP6 table, just to give you an idea. Um, this is Cisco devices, right? So firewalls and so on work since 2005, to give you an idea. So it's working, the same thing for most of the vendor. We've got what you say, firewall service module. This is basically a hardware network firewall, right? doing very fast gigabits in V4, but only doing 80 megabits. So much, much less, 100 less for V6. So you need to replace it, right? And so you have IPS and blah, blah, blah. So there are a few things there. If you want to do secure connectivity, right, for instance, from here, where I got V6, I want to go home safely over V6. There are multiple ways of doing it. One way is, for instance, between the two routers, in orange, this is this infamous V6 in V4 tunnel. We've seen it's by default not encrypted, so anybody can sniff it and inject data. This tunnel is basically IPv4 packet, okay, to traverse the internet. And how many solutions, how many vendors can encrypt IPv4 packets over the internet? Many of them, okay? You simply do this. You put all your V6 packets in V4, and then you use IPsec over V4. Done. Okay. Uh, a new trend in VPN is to use SSL for the tunnel, and of course, within this transport, in, within SSL, right, you can put IPv4 and IPv6, so it's working fine as well. No problem there. So regarding the set of tools that you have to mitigate attacks, we are in pretty good shape. The only thing is really about education. And if I go through best common practices, the first one, I won't go through all of them, right? This is mainly for your reference later. The first one is train yourself, okay? It's a little bit too late already. V6 is, uh, is a threat maybe for your network. So now you need to understand the threat. And as soon as you understand, it's no more a threat, right? Education, acknowledge is always key as usual. You can have a long list of things. You can do it and you can do it. So if we want to go to some conclusion, half an hour we spend explaining that things like ICMP, app spoofing, reconnaissance are mostly unchanged in V4. Okay? So you need to, to be aware of it. So what you already know in V4 is still okay for V6. Like of operational experience, a lack of security officer experience in V6 is real threat. Educate yourself. It's fun, by the way, as well. Okay? Security enforcement is possible. You have IPS, firewall, whether it's host based, which is free, or, or from a vendor, it's there, right, from a long, long time. Leverage IPv6, IPsec if you need it. Don't use it blindly, simply because it becomes you blind. Last point, if you are running a network, that's a test I'm seeing, uh, telling to some people I'm meeting right, once or twice a week, please do this in your network and come back to me if it's not working for you. Because IPv6 is already in your network. Okay? 
a couple of ways so you can sniff or use sniffler records and you look for this specific kind of traffic. If you have seen this traffic or DNS resolution for what's called ISATAP, which is another tunnel, it means that you have PC, Mac, Linux in your network that are trying very hard to get IPv6 connectivity. Right? As soon as an hacker or a Trojan arrives in your network and pretends to answer of this, it will switch to v6 and start using it. Okay, then it will be not really good for you. So I would like to say thank you to Mark, which is here. I have no clue where the other one are. Um, I would really love to, to see you, gentlemen from Megacom, because you enable v6 on this wireless. And honestly, you should try it, right? You have two days for trying it. Uh, first, enable, of course, IP6 table, change to this SSID, and look what's happening there. Okay? That's an opportunity for you to understand what is it to run an IPv6 network. And just as a small hint for what's coming, so IPv6 is really better with a Belgian beer, right? So don't try that beer or whatever, right? Only Belgian beer. We're better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyway. I wrote a book here yeah, on IPv6 security together with a friend of mine. So it's about 400 pages, so it's impossible for me to summarize it here, right? So read it. I've got the blog as well um, on this IPv6 security. Okay. Uh, I guess we still have time for a few minutes for questions. Five minutes at least. Five minutes. So first, thank you for listening. And any questions? They are angry. They want to get some lunch. No, there is somebody there. About the device that you said that your company would sell that allows to use one IP uh, V4 um, versus others, that would pretty much kill a lot of the um, companies that supposed to do is anti-spam, no? Because it would be almost impossible for them to analyze what's going on. Yeah, I fully agree. So we we'll try to come back on this slide to come as it's too late. So the, the, when we were sharing an IPv4 addresses among 1,000 different subscribers, of course, people that rely to do anti-spam, but it's not only anti-spam, right? A lot of things where you put a reputation associated to an IPv4 address, forget about it. Okay, um, so my company, as you know, is offering one of those products, so we are trying to scratch our head how we can fight this, but it's a real concern of us. Yeah, and uh, I'm afraid we, I mean, technology is just there, right? So we push it to the maximum. Yeah, real problem. Anybody else? What can you recommend um, large companies do in order to try to detect a flooding attack? Flooding of the V6 packet? Yeah. So it's relatively easy because if the link, I guess the attack is coming from the internet, right? The OS is coming from the internet. If your link through your ISP is not IPv6 enabled, then those packets will be stopped at your service provider. Okay. So you have no IPv6 connectivity to the world, you are not the target of an IPv6 denial of service. Great. Now, if indeed you are an IPv6 user and you have a contract with your ISP that tells you, yes, please send IPv6 traffic to me, if you are flooded, the good old way of detecting the attacks are still there, which is basically line utilization, okay, how many percentage of my bandwidth is used, as well as counting the numbers of packet per seconds through techniques like NetFlow. So again, in this place, we are lucky. There's the same as IPv4, so you can apply the same techniques. So remote triggered black hole and blah, blah, I mean, thousands of techniques can apply as well for V6. Uh, thank you. This uh, concludes the uh, presentation about the IPv6. Um, now there is a 60 minutes uh, lunch break. But uh, before you leave, uh, I would like to say that um, Downstairs at the uh, reception, there is a, a, a lost and found space, and uh, somebody has lost their uh, la laptop cover. So if he uh, misses it, you can get it downstairs at uh, the re reception. Thank you. Thank you.